So it's March, right? And is anybody else already ready to kill themselves? Yeah. 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 Seriously, it's like, okay, it's an election year. It's the year that the world is supposed to end. It's the year of the dragon, which means it's going to be like D-War out there. Um, that's what that means. And it's like the year of competitive cheese eating, according to the National Dairy Mind Control Council. And it's just those things are going to add up to being a really challenging year. Plus, okay, um, raise your hand if you have a birthday in 2012. Okay, like, almost all of you raised your hands. That is not a coincidence. The reason, that's like fate. You've all been brought together because you all have a birthday this year. And, you know, that's a, that's a very special thing. Unfortunately, what it means is, if you do have a birthday in 2012, it means that you are basically an abject failure. Shh. And, you know... Uh, we're gonna help you deal with that. Like basically, you know, part of that is realizing that the words abject failure actually like there's a lot of deep meaning behind them. For example, the etymology like abject means to like throw a great distance, and failure mean comes from like the word for fairy, fay, and and your, which is like the urethra. So it's basically you're being flung forward on like a stream of fairy urine, and that's kind of special and beautiful. It's sparkly, and you know you're gonna learn to look on the bright side of it. Basically. Basically. But, you know, it is going to be a tough year. Uh, by like May or June, Mitt Romney has a plan in place where he has a deal with the National Dairy Mind Control Council where anytime you eat a dairy product, you're going to hear Mitt Romney in your head explaining why dairy products are awesome and eating butter is really great and it makes you think of cows, which makes you think of makes you think of pastures, which makes you think of like wide open spaces and great gracious plains and like isn't it wonderful and you're just gonna constantly anytime you eat dairy products and you know people who are lactose intolerant are gonna start turning up dead under mysterious circumstances and it's gonna be a little bit weird and you're gonna be confronting the fact that your life is a complete you know failure and you're you're basically a total mess and there's gonna be dragons everywhere and the world's gonna be ending and blah 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 and it's gonna be kind of a tough time and there's gonna be all this competitive cheese eating happening too so what are you gonna do uh, how do you hold on to your sanity in the middle of this extremely difficult year there's two things about that first of all only a slut cares about holding on to their sanity so just you know that's right there you're just you've just completely outed yourself second of all um there's there's only one way to hold on to the last shreds of of your your mind and not have to resort to starting huffing like fabric softener and stuff and that is bad sex okay bad sex is our national anesthetic this is going to be the year of bad sex Bad sex is how we're going to basically deal with our ongoing political psychological dysfunction. And if you are perturbed by any of the things happening in our world, if, if the voice of Mitt Romney discussing cheese while you know, people are being eaten by dragons around you might bother you, that is a sign that you're not having bad enough sex. But we are here to help you. Tonight, we're going to give you a... a 12-hour seminar on how to make your sex life worse. And, okay, this is ta this takes time. It Seriously, it takes time. You have to acclimate to this shit. It's like lowering yourself naked into, like, a swimming pool full of, like, little anchovy pieces in olive oil. You know, just inch by inch. You, you can't just dive in. You have to kind of dip a toe in and then another toe. And then, you know, and eventually things that might seem horrifically unpleasant to you now will seem like kind of an appealing sex act compared to the things that you're actually doing. And, you know, once you get to that point, you won't even care anymore. It'll be awesome. And, you know, you know, yes, you will wake up in the morning with, like, a full-body cramp and weird, unexplicable, inexplicable rashes on the soles of your feet. But, you know, every time you see, like, a dragon fly past or you hear Mitt Romney talking about cheese, you can go have a mutual masturbation session with a drunken pyromaniac and everything will be better. So are you ready to learn to be a bad sex ninja? Yeah! yeah. Good. Okay, so we're going to hear more about that from the amazing M.K. Hobson, who is basically, she's the master, and she's come a long way. She's come from Oregon, which is the state of bad sex. Um, she's, come a, sorry. <laughs> uh, she's come a long way to tell us, to, to give us some lessons, and um, M.K. Hobson is the author. She's an amazing writer, and really, we're super glad to have her here tonight. She is the author of um, Native Star and its sequel, which is... Uh, I did actually write this down. Hidden Goddess. Hidden Goddess. 
she writes paranormal um, novels about society and manners set in sort of the Victorian era. And, um, you know, actually, um, she, she kind of learned about this firsthand because she became unstuck in time. And, you know, you've probably all had this happen to you. Getting unstuck in time, it's really annoying. You can't plan anything. She found that, like, basically she was spending her mornings until, like, one-ish or two-ish in the afternoon sometimes in, like, the mid-19th century, like the early Victorian era, around, I think, 1853. And then her afternoons, she was in the late 21st century, in, like, the year 2098, when it was, like, this post-apocalyptic, post-prandial, post-human kind of wasteland with, like, you know, death matches and cyborg, you know, just crazy shit going on all around her. And, you know, it just makes it hard to be organized. Like, you never, she, you never know exactly when you're going to switch from one time period to the other. How do you plan an outfit? Okay, like, the fashion challenges are, like, alone. How do you plan an outfit that's actually going to, like, work for both? Like, she had to create corsets that were actually, like, secretly supercomputers and, like, all these, like, hoop skirts that, like, could actually start spinning around at, like, you know, sublight speeds in order to meet the fashion challenges of 2098 and like the manners she had she kept forgetting when to curtsy and when to receive people and when to decapitate people and it was like a whole thing and like you know and any kind of like planning a project like how could you work on a project that you start in 1853 and you complete it in 2098 where do you leave your notes where you're gonna be able to find them where do you like you know, just huge, huge, huge challenges. Couldn't get anything done. But then she started thinking about it. She was like, maybe I've become un unstuck in time for a reason. You know, maybe there's something that the Victorian era and this, like, post-human wasteland can learn from each other. And maybe I can be an ambassador and carry, like, understanding back and forth. And then she's like, nah. And then she became a drug smuggler instead, and that was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant move because, like, you cannot get opium in 20, 2098 to save your fucking life. They love opium in the future. Like, seriously, if you have any opium now, just bury it somewhere. Or, or put it in, like, a, you know, a hermetically sealed freezer or something. Opium is going to be, like, gold in the future. And meanwhile, in 1853, it turns out that some of these, like, you know, um weird cyber teledildonic designer drugs that are basically like mega crack. They love those in 1853. They're like fucking... And actually, you may not remember this, but steampunk used to be fiction. I don't know if you knew that. But there was a time when all those stories about like, you know, supercomputers made out of gears and steam and like, you know, super brass robots going around like, you know, building mega bridges to Mars and shit. That was fictional at one point, and now it's all true because M.K. Hobson took cyber teledildonic mega crack back in time to 1853. And that's what happens when you get people really amped up. They're like, we're gonna build some fucking brass robots now! Except they say it in like a Victorian, you know, whoa, you know, they say it in like a Victorian way that I'm not even gonna attempt. Um, so, you know, she transformed our past. She's totally saved our future because opium has just mellowed them all out. She's like the savior of two timelines. Please welcome the amazing M.K. Hobson. Thank you, Nebula nominee, Charlie Jane Anders, for her novelette, Six Months, Three Days. 